Good evening, class. My name is Risa Medea Pera, and I am in the affirmation for the policy that animal testing should be banned and ended. Um, the, I will be pointing this out with three main claims. First being um, that animal testing is inhumane and um, there are better alternatives for them. The second being that animal research um, or animal testing is ineffective now and there are better ways to find, better, more efficient ways to find cures for um, medical research. And last but not least, um, that it is more cost efficient and that the alternatives are a little bit more um, cost efficient than it. <clears throat> So the first claim being that animal testing is inhumane um, and need to be stopped. Well, any, animal testing allows for, um, for animals to be bred specifically for testing, meaning that um, in a way it is inhumane and cruel uh, because they're not given a chance to live. Um, according to Dogs Use and, um, an article called Dogs Use and Research by the University of Illinois at Chicago um, Biological Resources Laboratory, um, in general, purpose-bred dogs um, make for better research subjects and um, and require are better source for research, and therefore um, they make these animals just for testing, just to be killed later on. <clears throat> um, and the second contention being that. Animals during research aren't treated properly only because um, part of it was, even though there's restrictions in terms of chemical restraint and how they're treated during the lab research, um, it does say that chemical restraints can be used if necessary to facilitate certain procedures. And it's just suggested and not mandated that they, um, they have, they consult a principles of anesthesia and guidelines for anesthesia. Um, of lab, large laboratory animals um, handbook, meaning that they don't have to abide by this. Um, the second contention now being that animals during research are not being treated fairly and humanely, and even though we have the Animal Welfare Act and other acts, local and state, to manage these facilities, it is not guaranteed by law that they are treated um, fairly, because during an undercover investigation um, revealed during a an investigation by the NI, by the um, Humane Society of the United States, NIRC cages were found. So they basically used cages to house um, mammals or yeah, chimps and monkeys. Um, about six thousand of them were found, and three hundred twenty-five for chimpanzees were found there. But there were only twenty chimpanzees that were um, actually documented and said that were fed and well and were actually tested on, meaning. What do they do with the other animals? They don't treat them properly, so they only have like enough resources for the 20. What about the other ones? <clears throat> also, the regulations that are intact right now are ineffective because of its, enforce its enforcement is not as strong and the consequences are not um, as strong. According to the Animal Legal Defense Fund, there are only 120 inspe uh, inspectors for over 12,000 facilities involved in research, exhibition, breeding, and dealing of animals, meaning that there's not even enough investigators to, um, to look through the facilities and make sure they're being treated properly. So how is enforcement really that effective? Um, so basically, since they're not even protected, how is this humane and how is this right? when in fact there's now alternatives, which brings me to the third point that animal testing is no longer really that needed because of um, the alternatives are now better and more efficient. Um, according to um, Alternatives in Research by NEOS, uh, the National, yeah, sorry. Um, there is a human being that donated their body and her last name is Henrietta and her, um, her cells were used to develop drugs for treating herpes, leukemia, influenza, hemophilia, and Parkinson's disease. Also, the fact that humans are the closest to human beings. There's no other thing that could be closer to us. Um, according to Dr. Aisha Akhtar, that is um, double board certified um, doctor, um, she said that noticing that how methyl prednisol results differed among species, there's um, the living conditions, stress, and artificial models affect the test results, meaning the results might not even be effect efficient and might not even be valid um, because of the different um, 
the environment that they're in. Also, the test results vary because of species and the strains of that species of the animal, meaning that there can be a lot of variability in it. While as when we're testing on human cells um, in vitro, uh, in vitro um, ways, we're testing on humans direct or on human cells directly on what we're directly affected on um, and the effects that it has on humans. <clears throat> and there's a concern being that there's not enough uh, people to do this and that's why it's not, or there's not enough people to do the alternatives to help uh, donate cells and, and such and therefore it's not um, if, as effective while as um, alternatives and research uh, article said that there is no lack of human volunteers, that there are people <coughs> with um, great diseases such as like terminal diseases that are willing to give their um, bodies for testing and therefore that is amazing.